If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Wednesday, May 22nd, 2013. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. Joining me today in the Finis Monitor is the second fastest swimmer in high school history in the 100 breaststroke. Last weekend at the California North Coast Section Championships, Charlie Weiser swam a 53-57 in the 100 breast, beating the overall national high school record, but placing second in the event behind Steven Stumpf. Weiser will take that success to Stanford University next fall, but for now, he's a senior at Miramonte High School, where he joins us now in the Finis Monitor. Charlie, it's great to see you. How are you today? I'm great. Thank you for having me. Great to have you. Congratulations on a fantastic swim. Yeah, it was truly a race I'll never forget. It was incredible having three swimmers all under the national record. It was just crazy. Well, you... Your best time going to the meet was 55-27, then you went 54-8 in prelims, and then that amazing 53-5 in finals. I mean, that's, that's almost two-second drop, which is, is kind of unheard of for a high school senior. Um, where did that come from? You know, I, I couldn't tell you. A week ago, we had our league meet, and, you know, in the IM, I went at 204, and that was just really kind of a wake-up call. I need to focus more on my swimming, and then I go 149 at NCS. So the time drop was, you know, not something that I – it wasn't totally um, new to me. I've been able to drop time um, in going from one meet to the next. Really, when I taper, I think the rest and shaving down really gets – helps me out, and then really focusing – on that big meet and kind of getting confidence to really go all out and then dropping the time is just crazy. Yeah, I wanted to talk about the 200 I am, which you won with the 149. I mean, just absolutely, again, a spectacular swim. How did that 200 I am um, affect your preparation for the 100 breaststroke? Yeah, for sure. So I really had no idea I was going to – be able to break 150. I wasn't expecting at all, at all. And then when I did, it really got gave me confidence to really feel like I'm feeling good today. So the that breaststroke time is definitely a possibility. And seeing Stephen in prelims tie the national record, um, I had some doubts, a little uncertainty that I would be able to kind of compete with that. But then Saturday it was a that race was a good omen, and I like good omens. So kind of took it as a good sign that today's going to be a good one. All right. So knowing that Steven had swum so well in prelims, yeah. you had to be really pumped off every wall to see you were right with him on every turn. I mean, yeah. take us through that race and your mindset. So at the beginning of the race, my dive was a little iffy. I had, my legs were pretty low on the dive, and I think that made me lose a little velocity. But then... Yeah, on the first turn, I saw I was right with him, and then I couldn't see him on the second one, so I didn't really have a good sense of where he was next to me because I, I wasn't really using my peripheral vision very much, just kind of going after it and seeing um, if I would be able to stay with him. And then on the last turn, I saw I'm right neck and neck. It's going to be a close one. And I didn't see Nick on the other side of Steven, so I didn't really have a good sense of where he was either. And then on that last lap, I just put my head down and gave it all I had. What was going through your mind when you saw 53-57? To be honest, I don't, I was kind of in awe. I was just shocked that, and seeing three 53s up there, that's what really was remarkable, seeing three guys all under the national record. It was crazy. 
Now, all three of you guys have kind of gone through the, the high school ranks together, so you guys know each other pretty well. Um, you know, tell me, what does it feel like to know that you're ending your career, you and Steven actually, are ending your career knowing that you are the second fastest high school breaststroker ever in history? I, I haven't even been able to comprehend that yet because I don't know I'm just it's crazy thinking like I'm a water polo player and a wreck swimmer I don't do much swim training I only swim for like three months out of the year and when I am doing that training I'm not really going super hard so it's I just don't feel like I and I have that title as the second fastest breaststroker in high school history. It's, it's, it's remarkable, it's incredible, and I'm honored. Well, that's a very good segue because I want to talk about this, this um, training that you do for swimming, which is remarkably very little. Three months out of the year, three, four months out of the year is the only time you devote yourself fully to swimming. The rest of the time, it seems like it's either swimming and water polo together or just water polo. So. Yeah. Um, you know, which of the two sports would you say you favor the most, that you, you like the most? Um, I'd say I probably in, I've probably favored water polo much more in terms of training. But um, this year after water polo season ended in, I think, end of November. Yeah, end of November is when it ended, I think. Um, I really wanted to just focus on swimming and um, I think that definitely helped me out a lot. I didn't do much winter water polo um, and so being able to just focus on swimming and just doing swim practices um, definitely helped me out a lot, It especially with my other strokes, not just breaststroke because I was really able to develop my the technical part of the stroke and I was able to get a lot more conditioning in um, than I have in years past be, with being able to just focus on swimming this year. Well, you you probably have to be in really good physical shape for water polo as well. And, you know, I would imagine, that, you know, having played water polo very briefly in high school, I know that um, it kind of favors breaststrokers because you got the egg beater yeah. kick. So you're training exactly. that, so your legs are strong. So it's, not, you know, it's not like you came out into swimming totally new to the sport but i understand when you came into this high school season um did you feel like you had a lot of ground to make up or was it easy to just get right into the practices um i definitely feel like i had a lot more ground to make up um especially i traveled a lot this summer i went to i got to go to the london olympics which is a lot of motivation um and so I really wasn't doing much training this summer, so I kind of came into the water polo season a little behind and finished even a little behind where I was last year, so I definitely had a lot of ground to make up. Um, but it was good because I was able to transition right into swimming, um, and so I had a much larger time period from when I started swimming to the end of high school swimming to kind of develop into that um, swimming mindset. Now, when you go to Stanford in the fall, you're going to be a swimmer and a water polo player, correct? Yes. When you were thinking about college, were you did, was it ever a, a thought of just doing one sport, or were you always thinking you wanted to go to college and do both? Um, that was definitely the biggest kind of aspect in my college process was where am I going to be able to potentially and hopefully be able to swim and play water polo. And I'm really thankful for the coaches at Stanford for giving me the opportunity to be able to do both and hopefully succeed in doing both. Um, I, I can be happier and more thankful that they're giving me this opportunity. Well, this summer, what are you going to do? Are you going to still do kind of the equal water polo and swimming, or will you do a focus on just one sport? Um, you know, I haven't – I'm not really sure yet. I'm definitely going to be playing a lot of water polo because I have a lot of makeup to do as all, all of my 
teammates and competitors have been playing this whole time while I've been swimming. But I also, seeing the success I had in swimming this past weekend, I definitely want to kind of hit the ground running and kind of really train hard in swimming to see where I can go. Do you think you might go to like the national championships or junior nationals, anything like that for swimming this summer just to see what you can do long course? Um, I don't think I'm going to. I just, just want to train at, uh, down at my local swim club and just kind of start off ahead of where I have in past years. And what swim club will you be training with? Um, well, it's actually not. It's just a Arinda Country Club swim team, just a rec team. Um, my coach, Steve Hoffler, he's been my coach for my whole life, and he's really the foundation of all my stroke and success in swimming. Well, Steve Hoffler is a great friend of Swimming World. We, we know he's a great technician, and it showed in last weekend's swim. So uh, yeah. I'm sure he's going to do well for you this summer. Yeah, and I also have to thank Donnie Heidery, my head coach. He's been remarkable, been with me the whole way. Um, couldn't ask for a better high school coach. Absolutely, and actually, is it, if I'm not mistaken, isn't Don Stevens coach during the uh, outside of high school season as well? He is with the Rindo Aquatics. So um, a lot of it's, you probably had a lot of little insight into into how to to race Stephen because Don knows him very well. Yeah, yeah, it's it's we've been competitors for quite some time now, so it's pretty cool to have gone with him in this journey the whole way. Well, it's going to be exciting to see how you do with water polo and swimming. Obviously, you're not the first to do that. I mean, Matt Biondi comes to mind. He did that to great success. Yeah. Um, but, you know, maybe down the road, you could be the first to do swimming and water polo in the same Olympics. Who knows? Yeah. It's, I haven't really gone there yet. It's a little too far-fetched, but... You know, I'm just going to work hard and see what happens. Well, you probably thought being the second fastest swimmer in high school history was far-fetched, and look where you are now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's true. Please, please. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us, Charlie. Congratulations again on a great meet and great way to end your high school career, and we look forward to seeing how you do at Stanford. Thank you very much for having me. All right, our pleasure. Take All right, care. So that was Charlie Weiser joining us in the Finis Monitor, and that's going to do it for today's edition of the Morning Swim Show. Be sure to stay with SwimmingWorld.com for the latest news in aquatic sports and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.